Book to Action is a wonderful program sponsored by the California Center for the Book. They encourage communities across the state to, to select and read and discuss a book and then to participate in collaborative community service projects. Uh, this year, the El Segundo Library, together with our partners, decided to highlight contemporary Native American and Indigenous experiences as part of our first Book to Action program. I learned a ton. I think um, members of our community did as well, and there were many bonds that were formed that should lead to increased opportunities for, for raising cultural awareness in, in El Segundo and beyond. I'm a member of the Arts and Culture Committee for El Segundo, and we've been working closely with the library to bring some really incredible artists to do some site-specific work. It's been a lot of hard work by our committee, the Arts and Culture Committee, collaborating with both the Friends of the Library and the Library Board and to fundraise, to gain support, and to get all of the logistics mapped out. So it's been a, about a year's work in progress. There's going to be an incredible mural that's going to be painted over Memorial Day weekend by an artist. Um, her name is Nanaba Chacon, and she is Dene and Chicana, and she's been collaborating with Mercedes on the design part of the mural. Mercedes Derame is a Tongva artist working primarily in installation, mixed media, and photography, and she's doing a piece that is custom for the old copy room. Now it's going to be turned into a rotating art gallery. We're actually standing right now on Tongva land. A lot of people don't stop and consider wh whose land they're walking on, whose land they're living on, benefiting from in so many different ways. And Mercedes is a member of the Tongva people. And so she brings that element of education about whose land we're on, who the Tongva are, and that they actually do exist today. They are revitalizing their culture, their language. They have uh, members who are scholars, professors, artists, business people. So she brings that knowledge to us. And so we're really excited to share that with the community. This is kind of a little different for me, but I came into the library and looked at the space and was trying to make something that would be informative and locate people in the space. And so I did this map. It's all in the traditional village site names. And so I wanted to give that information and have people somewhat recognize the spaces, but to kind of introduce them to the original place names. And some are familiar, like Topanga, Topanga, right? Malibu, or Kawanga. Like these are places that we kind of know and have heard, but maybe don't realize that they have Tongva origins or what their meanings are. I am putting in these kind of mapping points of my own personal history of places I've lived, places I've worked on sites, places that are significant that I know of, that I've visited with my father or my family. And so it has a kind of educational bend, but also has this personal story entwined because I feel like when you talk about a place and when you talk about a history, it's really the people and the stories that make it alive and to kind of explain that Tonga still exists and that we're still around and we have connections to some of these places or a lot of these places and kind of to re-enliven um, that story. So a lot of the workshop was really um, understanding the process of creating a piece like this and um, you know what goes into it because I think a lot of the times um, because murals go up so fast uh, people think that they're very immediate that you know it's still even though this only took five days it was a lot of hours within that five days um, and that every single surface here is hand painted each stroke, each everything, all the colors were mixed, um, was done by hand. So I think understanding that process, but not, not only the actual process of painting it, but all of the preparation before that, that creating something like this isn't always immediate. It takes a lot of planning and also thinking of the content. So I think raising that, um, having workshops that facilitate that kind of knowledge, the kind of 
work that goes into creating public work pieces is good because um, it adds to the appreciation of the overall work and effort. This mural began about a year ago and it was a project that was started by Kristen Dorsey. Really she was interested in having me do a mural here in El Segundo and really give recognition to the indigenous people that are here. A lot of the work that I do as a muralist focuses on indigenous people and putting them into urban spaces, um, creating monuments and large-scale pieces, public work pieces in that manner. I'm not Tongva. Um, which is the indigenous people of this region. So we felt that it was appropriate and essential to collaborate with a Tongva artist. And the concept of the work came together with another artist, Mercedes Dorme. We had um, a number of conversations and I really liked where this conversation, what this conversation stemmed. And it was really this idea of ancestral knowledge and, and having this relationship to the past. What I do hope that people get when they see this is that they wonder and that they look at these stones and that when they see them again, that they hold that wonderment of what they're used for. And especially for indigenous people, um, I create work for indigenous people first and foremost. And really it's about evoking evoking these things that, that have been in our culture for thousands and thousands of years. I'm, I'm in awe. Um, I've, I, earlier I cried. It's just, it's amazing. You, every person that walked in the door watching their face, that they haven't seen it before, they maybe saw the sketches or, you know, a blurb on Facebook about it or Instagram, but you walk in and it's, it's spectacular. It takes your breath away. This room is a community room. Preschoolers use the room to check out toys. There's the Moms Club meets here with their toddlers. Uh, preschoolers come here. There's elementary school field trips. I vote here, you probably vote here. There's book discussions. Everyone uses this room for different purposes. This mural will be seen. So in doing that, we hope to open the conversation about indigenous people who live in El Segundo and who lived in El Segundo. A lot of the Natural elements came from a community listening session that I also held um, and it, that session was basically asking the community, the public, different, different people who are, live here in El Segundo what they would like to see or what kind of concepts they hold dear to El Segundo in particular. One of the things that of course was mentioned was the endangered blue butterfly. Um, which exists only here and because that blue butterfly exists here it also um, relies on the coastal buckwheat and the silver lu lupine and so throughout the entire mural you kind of start with the waves and it transcends into like this uh, flight of butterflies and the butterflies kind of transition over to the the buckwheat which they they eat and and they use to pollinate um, and then the silver lupine and finally ending within the constellations. We're doing a uh, book talk uh, for the book um, There There by Tommy Orange. Well, I think it's a good way to, um, to, to, to get this topic out there and it's accessible in a way that, um, say, maybe an academic presentation wouldn't draw the same group of people or be quite as accessible. Um, and um, that way you can you know, kind of work through some of the themes and ideas with, uh, with, with a group of uh, you know, interested people. It's a book that's set in Oakland in the present day, and it's a book about uh, American Indians in Oakland, um, and a generation of American Indians who grew up in the city. Um, it tells the, their story through uh, several characters, uh, several interlocking characters who all kind of um, take different paths but come together at the very end when they uh, collide more or less at the, uh, the big powwow in Oakland. And I think the, the author really wanted to tell the story of American Indians in cities because um, American Indians or Native Americans, the majority of the population lives in urban areas throughout the United States and has for some time. Um, and yet um, there hasn't been a lot of scholarly attention, uh, popular culture doesn't really think about Native Americans that way. And I think from reading the book, he's also wanting to explore the struggles of American Indians themselves, trying to kind of come to terms with that idea of what it means to be Native in the city. And uh, my, my sense is that the book was a way to, uh, to work through that 
maybe for his own purposes, but also to, to provide a source for other Native peoples and non-Natives to understand that this is a, a major part of Native American life today. You know, I think uh, reading the book and understanding that that uh, it's not an isolated incident, but rather this is uh, you know one source for understanding modern Native American life and Native Americans as very modern peoples. Um, and I'm hoping we can kind of uh, begin with a little bit of historical background to help understand that, but then also talk about other other ways that Native peoples are uh, are, are part of modern America. And there's actually another a long history of Native peoples as contemporary artists as using art as a way of um, of exploring and documenting Native American experiences, um, Native American experiences in modern culture and society. Um, so I think it works very well with the book, actually. I think the, there's some similar themes there between contemporary artists, uh, contemporary visual artists, and contemporary authors exploring various aspects of modern Native American life. <laughs>